Circular economy <coughs> is a um, both a systemic but also another way of uh, creating business where you actually uh, try to enhance all the three bottom lines, the, both the people, the planet and the profit. It's a, uh, an economy that's regenerative and restorative by design. Uh, it's it powered by default on uh, renewable energy. It um, holds the potential to decouple uh, monetary growth from growth in uh, virgin resource extraction. It holds also the resources at highest possible level at all times. So you will be able to feed them back into the loop. So there will be potential inputs for your next production. Um, what is it more? Yes, I would say very shortly, I would say it's a system or it's a, a business model where waste does not exist. Previously in, in the linear model, we would say that we started by designing something. We get, we get an idea for a new product uh, and then uh, designing it throughout the, the, uh, the different steps in, in, in the business model and then it become launched on the market. And then we hope that consumers would like to use it and then after they have used it, then they uh, throw it away, it became waste. But in the, in the circular economy, there we start at the point of uh, purchase and design there. Because if we actually take the, the molecules from previous products or whatever we, we, we like to call them, uh, and this, uh, start the design process from there. So, so virgin molecules or virgin materials uh, do not exist. I think most industries see circular economy as an opportunity uh, to develop new good businesses and to have a more, uh, a more stable relationship with their customers. We have a robot company. Uh, they are moving into selling a service and not selling the robot. And it has expanded their, uh, their way of dealing with their customers and also have, uh, uh, they have experienced a lot of new customers who maybe not, don't have the means to invest in a completely new robot, but they can use the service. So they pay a little at a time. But I also think they see it as a, as a kind of a tool to solve some of the other questions they are dealing with and that could be, um, do we have the necessary resources? Can we source them from, uh, from various uh, countries and so on? And um, the climate, uh, can you actually, I think most of, most of the companies sees it as a means of reducing their CO2 emissions and uh, f climate footprint. The circular economy might be quite a paradigm shift, especially in business, because we have to think quite differently for, for, uh, in, in the business plan. And, and, uh, and a lot of, of, uh, of models really have to be reformulated or reinvented uh, 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 in, in the circular economy. So it's, uh, it's not a, a fast uh, shift from linear to, to circular. It's actually quite an uh, extensive change in, in the way of thinking business. There's a lot of habits that drive our individual behavior as uh, people, but also as businesses. And we are doing everything we can now to challenge those habits and innovate. And when we bring those two things together, then magic happens. Just like the recent example of our new six pack, where we've invented a way to not use plastic in the handles uh, or, or in the wrapping around the six pack, but use uh, glue to glue the cans together. That's the kind of innovation that basically offers the consumers a better alternative but it's also better for the planet. I think some of the main barriers to get a society based on circular economy is of course the lock-in we have in the current uh, agenda today or the current society where we basically take things, use them for a while and then we burn them, incinerate them. So we have to really say we want to eliminate waste. We don't want it as a concept. And every time we see a product, we should think what is its next life? How do we make sure that these materials stay in loop all the time? We should stop investing in new incinerators and we should uh, really set criteria to set, for instance, standards on plastics, on glass, on metals, uh, on the, the recyclability of these products. Sometimes you also have to uh, deal with the um, legislation that's not fit for a circular economy. For example, it's uh, difficult to transport waste across the borders. Um, so when you have a wind turbine um, used wind turbine, it's very difficult to, to get a permission to transport it across the border. 
to the back to the factory where it was produced. So there's different um, different kinds of, of obstacles. As policymakers, we set the framework, so we can actually set standards for how plastics are used, how they are recycled, how they are treated afterwards. But we want to do this in partnership with the companies, so that we actually do it in a clever way that's not too expensive and that rewards those companies that invest in a new sustainable future. We also have to see it in the context of actually being going from 1.8 billion consuming class globally going to what they estimate 5 billion consuming class and we want these 5 billion we still have the same amount of resources so if the what's called the inequality shouldn't uh, increase and, and everybody should have access to the same kind of living in the consuming class, then we need to share the resources that's available there. Yeah. So in that sense you could say that if we do not change into the circular economy, then society will definitely change big time because some will have the access to these resources and the rest will not have the access to the, access to the resources. So in, in actually going from 1.8 billion to 5.0 billion consuming class, will demand a circular economy if we really all need and all want and all have to or actually have to have to sustain that kind of level and we cannot as a living in the global north where we've actually been living for so many years we cannot say to people you are not allowed to live as we are because we have now the resource access to mm. and then also talking into do we really have the resources here in europe in the future or where are the resources located so in that sense i would say taking on a circular economic system might be the system that actually will be able to create a society that where we can live as we're doing today but if we do keep on doing it in a limit linear way it might actually create even more inequalities than we know about today. It's absolutely realistic to have a society based on circular economy. It's going to be very, very difficult. We're going to face some big obstacles on the way. But the same way that we said we want a society completely on renewable energy in 2050, we can actually say we want a fully circular society in 2050 and we should all move together. This is probably the biggest challenge besides climate change that people, companies, governments are facing all over the world. I think uh, it is realistic in the future and I think that is uh, what one should aim for. Uh, I think we are also a company that likes to uh, eat our elephants in pieces. Uh, so we would need to do what is uh, possible and we are taking that work stream by work stream now. I think we have seen in the last few days and also with Carlsberg today that some of the big companies are actually moving forward and setting some very ambitious targets towards 2050. And I think, uh, I think maybe 2050 is a very important year. It's, it gives us time to, to, to develop uh, how to, to make this transition work. Um, but this is still only Denmark. So, so um, I think we have, an, uh, we have a challenge uh, looking at the rest of the world also. So, so I think 2050 is a very good year to, to, um, to focus on. Give us, give us a, a one one two more years then then we have uh, an idea of uh, of a master uh, program in the circular economy and then uh, we will start uh, providing candidates for the business and uh, within uh, uh, 10 15 years from now we have a completely different mindset in uh, companies around denmark in uh, around the, yeah. most, most of the world it's not about when we are becoming it 100% question is if we ever going to get there 100 percent but the question is that we are on our journey and we start that journey and we start it fast and we also understand in society the necessity of changing and thinking different mm. i would say that's more important than putting a number on if it's in five years or ten years or 12 years mm. the question is more that we get started and with a pace that we can see things are moving and changing